Hello, Ling441. Uh, we're back. Um, I just want to make a short video here to walk you through the first homework exercise for the class, which is on digital signal processing. Uh, so there's two components to this. I've got the uh, homework here loaded up on my machine. Uh, I guess first thing I can point out is that um, this is due on September 21st. Uh, at least that's the way I've written it up in the syllabus. Um, I'm actually recording these videos in the summer. Um, so uh, something may happen in the future to make this not due on that particular day, but for now it's going to be due then, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and this video will be posted well before that um, date comes around. Um, and I can also point out um, that the um, homework itself is accessible through the home page here. Uh, just click on the homework exercises link. Uh, and there's two different links here for the homework. One is the digital signal processing exercise. Um, which I can open in a new tab and you'll see what I was just looking at there on um, in preview on my Mac. Uh, so it's the same thing. There's also an Excel spreadsheet uh, listed here, which I've also got open. Um, and this is kind of the basis of the exercise itself. Uh, so there's two parts to the exercise and I just wanna walk you through them briefly. Um, there's also a video, I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, so uh, the first part is um, an exercise in um, analog to digital uh, conversion, or uh, if you like sampling and quantization, the two kind of steps we walked through in the first lecture for the class. So what I've got here on the first tab of this Excel spreadsheet is um, the one listed down sampling is a very short snippet of a sound file, uh, the way it might look in a computer. So at each point in time, there's an amplitude associated with that point in time. So this is a sample and that sample has um, an amplitude of some sort. The sample is taken at a particular time and then the amplitude changes as it um, progresses through time, right? Uh, this uh, little waveform is sampled at 1000 Hertz, which means that every 1000th of a second or every millisecond, you get a new sample, right? But it only has, um, well, 21 samples in total. It goes up to 0.02 seconds. Uh, so um, it's a very short part of that. Uh, it doesn't really need to go any further because I want to want you to walk through this process basically by hand. Um, so what you're going to do is take this little wave form and then down sample it, which means that you're gonna convert it to a lower sampling frequency. Uh, and then you're also gonna do that with two different quantization depths um, for the three different options for the um, exercise. So the first uh, part of the exercise, I want you to down sample the wave at 500 Hertz. So that means you're gonna have to take samples, starting with these original samples, you're gonna have to take samples at a different rate, a different frequency such that you're taking 500 samples per second, starting with the zero time point, the very first row, that one. Uh, and then you are also going to um, change the amplitude values um, for each sample you get uh, based on different quantization depths. Um, so that uh, description of how you do that is listed on the second page here. So uh, for the um, <coughs> first option, you're just gonna do two bit quantization. Um, and what that means is you basically have four different possible amplitude values. Uh, and the four different possible amplitude values I'm just giving you right here. Um, so they're equally spaced apart from each other in amplitude space. Uh, and these are your options. So basically every time you see an amplitude value here, you have to match it up with the closest different possible option here. Um, there are some cases where you're gonna get an amplitude value in the original which is halfway in between one of these values. And if that happens, just pick one of those values at random and say, well, that's the amplitude value for that um, sample. Um, hopefully that makes sense. It gets a little bit more complicated with the four bit quantization. So the first um, sort of resampling of this waveform I want, you, I want you to do is to downsample it to 500 Hertz with two bit quantization. So use this set of values. Secondly, once again, down sample the wave to 500 Hertz and then use four bit quantization, <clears throat> excuse me. And that means you have a wider variety of amplitudes to choose from. And again, it's the same idea. You take an amplitude over here and you match it up with the amplitude value that's closest 
among this range of values and you say that's its digitized uh, amplitude value or quantized amplitude value. Uh, and then the last one, you, did, you downsample the wave at 250 hertz and then use 4-bit quantization to create a new wave. So you're gonna basically create three copies of this. Um, they will not include all of this information. You're gonna lose some information and then you can just um, basically plot them out over here or wherever in Excel or whatever spreadsheet program you use um, to do this. And then on top of that, I want you to basically give me your listings of the time and amplitude values for the waves, the three different waves you create, uh, and then graph each downsampled wave with time on the x-axis and amplitude on the y-axis. So it looks like kind of a waveform as we're used to seeing them in PROT. Um, okay, so I have this as you can print these out and hand them in on a piece of paper. I should probably change that uh, sometime between now and September. Uh, or send them to me in Excel spreadsheet form through the Dropbox on D2L or emailing them to me at swinters at ucalgary.ca. Uh, we're doing this all virtually. You don't need to print them out. Um, although if you really feel motivated, you can package them up in an envelope and put them in the mail and we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that makes sense. And if it doesn't, um, just ask questions as usual. Um, the second part of this is to do an automatic pitch tracking exercise, which is a little bit more involved. Um, and this is the um, part of the exercise which I created that instructional video for. So on top of this little video, uh, I have a video here on um, using the basics of Excel because basically this is not um, a problem you're gonna wanna do by hand. The first one you can do by hand uh, and that's kind of the easiest way to do it, but this one is not, it's not easy to do it by hand. So use a spreadsheet program of some sort. I'm um, framing these all in the form of Excel because it's such a widespread um, or widely used uh, spreadsheet program. But if you wanna use like Google Spreadsheets or some open source or whatever kind of spreadsheet program, that's fine. Um, this walks you through how to make this work in Excel and other spreadsheet programs will work in a very similar way. Uh, I made this a few years ago, so I don't have a beard. Um, but I'd recommend watching this video if you're not comfortable using Excel in this way. Um, what you want to do though, or what I want you to do for the automatic pitch tracking exercise is to determine um, for two different kind of mystery waves, they're both complex waves, I want you to determine what their fundamental frequency is. Uh, and we talked about kind of like setting the pitch range when we're doing automatic pitch tracking in PROT. Um, to keep this relatively simple for you, the range of frequencies that you need to consider when you do this problem is just going to be um, three different frequencies. I'm going to constrain it a lot so that you're not doing a huge amount of busy work um, without that leading to understanding. So the possible fundamental frequencies of these waves are either 8 hertz, 10 hertz, or 12 and a half hertz. So use those as sort of your possible F zeros and for both complex ways what I want you to do is to determine the value of R for each of those three possible fundamental frequency values using a window that starts at the first sample of each wave which is this one uh, they're both going to be time zero for both of these um, mystery waves uh, and then the window length that you're using as the foundation of this analysis needs to be three times as long as the longest period you are checking in your pitch analysis. So I'll let you figure out what that means, but the reason uh, why I'm specifying that criterion is because this is the same standard for window length that is used in PROT's automatic pitch tracking analysis. So you're gonna be doing something similar to what the PROT uh, pitch tracker will do. This is not totally similar to speech though because these are extremely low frequencies that no human being would actually ever use, uh, but I'm doing that again to kind of help keep the math simple. Uh, I'll mention again here, um, it's similar, or the same sampling rate for these guys. So you're getting one sample every millisecond. Um, you gotta keep that in mind when you're figuring out how long to make these windows and how to do the computations um, for R uh, that you need to do to calculate which fundamental frequency is actually the right one. So based on, the second part of this is based on the values of R that you calculate for the first part. Tell me what you think the fundamental frequency of each complex wave is. Basically, figuring out the value of R and then making a decision on the basis of those values of R. You should be able to know how to do that based on the lecture I gave you on automatic pitch tracking. Um, and in addition, using Excel to help you do all the um, crunching of the numbers, which is very repetitive as you go through it. Um, I'm not gonna say more about that because I feel like I've said enough about it already. But again, if you don't understand how to do it or have questions, uh, please ask me. 
um, at any time, um, send me an email or whatever, uh, and I'll get back to you, hopefully with the expertise you need to make uh, the magic happen. Um, so once you're done with this, uh, send me your spreadsheet containing your calculations so that I know what you did. Uh, the reason why I want you to do that is because uh, if you make a mistake of some sort, that will help me understand what you did. Um, and then also send me the rationale you use to figure out what the fundamental frequency of each of these two complex waves is. Uh, you can send that um, to me through the Dropbox on D2L or email it to me too. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's all clear. Uh, I've got another little thing here that I forgot to mention earlier. If you go through the readings tab on the um, home page, there's a link here to this uh, file called Bases and Bits. Uh, this is in addition to um, the lecture notes and also this homework. Uh, this is just a basic little thing I wrote up um, to try to explain what how different base systems work uh, in mathematics in case um, you didn't learn that or have forgotten it or whatever. Uh, and it takes it from a slightly different perspective because this is a um, base 5 system we use for scoring ultimate frisbee games, which is my job away from my job um, when I'm not working. Uh, so that it kind of walks you through how that works in um, Frisbee format. So you can read that if you want. Uh, and then that basically the idea for that is to help explain um, where we get this notation of say um, two bit quantization from or four bit quantization from because uh, in a computer everything is base two. Um, and again, you can go back to the notes if you want to have more details on that. But that's just so you know. Uh, and I also mention here that I have um, a few links on intonation, which is what we're going to get into next now that we know kind of the mechanics of how a computer represents speech or at least sound um, in digital format. Uh, so I've given you those links in case you want some further reading on that. And I'm going to give you a couple of links online as well for that. But I'll wait until I actually start the next lecture before I talk about that further. So I think that's all I have to say about this for now. Um, Hopefully things are clear about what you have to do, but again, if they're not, just ask. Okay, see you in a minute.